You know, we're but, just given everything on a silver platter. So certainly true. I, I usually describe it as my tolerance for suck is really high. And, and I imagine, again, like I... I think well, that's why you're an entrepreneur. I mean, I have, I, as a perfectionist, I don't have any tolerance for sucking. Although I, you know, there are times when I haven't done well in races, I guess, and I've overcome that, but it's hard. Like, so, yeah. So I was going to say, like, for you, one... Your tolerance for suck is like for what my perception of suck is like how long when you were doing swimming, because back then, like you aren't listening to music. You're just like alone in a pool doing laps for two hours. And like even in so like in college, I was bad, good enough to be on the team, but I was the worst on the team. So like never scored a Big Ten, never made it to NCAA. So, yeah, I mean, you're getting up at five in the morning, at in the morning, jumping in this cold pool where you don't get to talk to anyone. I'm always like worried I'm going to get laughed because <laughs> like, I'm the worst on the team. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like to me, it's that, I guess to me there's a purpose to that. And the purpose is I'm becoming my best athlete and hopefully that'll pay off on race day. So like I can get through that because I see what I'm working towards. But like, do you, do you understand that when you say like you did bad in a race, that it's still better than everyone in the world except for maybe a hundred people. Like, do you does that like does that resonate to you, or is it still like no? There's 99 well, people that are better than me today, and I hate it. <laughs> I mean, in swimming, when I was in swimming, I it, there was more than a hundred people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was still in that one percent, right? And it, it's weird because I went to the triathlon where I was the best in the world, clearly, which doesn't comprehend in my head but like I started to expect that of, that of myself and almost everything and then I switched to running which like obviously you're not going to switch sports at the professional level and be awesome the first try but and my coach my track coach talked to me and he's just like when you have this really skewed perception where you have been the best in the world so anything less than literally the best person in the world is failure to you and it's like hard for me to comprehend because like to me it's just like yeah I mean, yeah. <laughs> so it's just weird because I like it just to me, I don't know how to comprehend it. Like if I probably sound, I don't know if I sound like really, I don't know, cocky or like over the yeah. top saying that, but it's just like, it, it's a weird perception. Like once you do it, it's yeah. You expect that out of yourself. Well, so like for me, one, you're not cocky at all, but, and like, I find it fascinating because it's a, it's something that like, for lack of a better word no one ever can understand of like you've now come you've achieved the complete pinnacle of this endeavor like that's it you're like there's nothing else to like i'm just fascinated with how did you like what made you do like switch to out of triathlon what is it just well, that was, I mean, like for me, I talked to my husband about it and I was like, the only reason I'd stick with it is for the money. And at first he was like, well, yeah, let's stick with it for the money. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, a good reason. Like, <laughs> it, it's the sport is a really grueling process where I couldn't get out the door every day, just purely motivated on money. And for me, like I had a goal, I achieved it. And to try to achieve the same goals, this is so unexciting for me. I and motivated by a challenge, something where I can see improvement. I kind of had felt like I reached my potential in triathlon. So to me, it's like, why would I continue to try to just be there? I want to actually see improvement. And so I guess going into this Olympic season, as a perfectionist, I am at, I'm guessing your brain's like, I'm going to win. But like, <laughs> yeah. Is there like a disconnect there where you're trying to set your expectations for like, hey, you're going to the Olympics in a totally different sport. That's incredible, which is what I would be thinking. But like, you made the Olympics. Holy shit. Well, I haven't, I haven't qualified. The Olympic trials and running are in June. But it's, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a disconnect. And I think, um, you know, I'm somebody who, even when I joined the sport of running, I was like, I said, I'm going to be the best in the world. And everyone laughed at me. And that's, fine but like to me like that's my mentality and that's where I want to be and I also think like that's kind of the reality of every athlete like if you go to the Olympics everyone wants to win like there's not one athlete who goes there like planning to want to lose 
You think there is? No, nobody goes there to want to lose. Right. I was I was more thinking about like Jamaican bobsled team of eh, you know we're there. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, side, I mean, I think how many people just, will recognize that reference? Uh, I guess it depends on their age. Yeah, you did for sure. <laughs> I feel like anyone under twenty five is going to be like, well. <laughs> anyway, continue, please. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. It's just um when I switch sports, like everyone laughed at me and I haven't yet proven that I'm the best in the world. And the reality is like, I'm not going to be the best in the world probably in the 10 K five K, which is what I'm trying to qualify in, um, this year at least. So yeah, I mean, there is a disconnect, but I still want to do it. 